Hi, in this video, Apostle Joshua Selman will be sharing with us on how to go deep with the Holy Spirit. Let's all be connected to this video. Stay blessed and be prepared to be awesomely blessed by this video production. God bless you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. What is the relevance of studying the word? It gives us an understanding of the ways of God. It gives us an understanding of the ways of God, the thoughts of God, and the mindset of God. Hmm. We must study the word of God. Contain in this book. Listen, when you listen to my teachings or you read my books, for instance, in that book is a communication of my persuasions. Is that true? A book is simply a documentation of persuasions. When I'm persuaded about a philosophy or an idea or a pattern of thought, I document it. So when you study my books, it is possible to begin to think like me even without seeing me because you've explored my material so much. You have submitted yourself to my thinking pattern and that's what leadership is all about influencing people to come to a point where they adopt your value system welcome to start now channel we are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in god's presence the bible says in psalm 119 verse 130 the entrance of thy word giveth life as you listen and watch may you experience the transformative power of god's life what are the components of true fellowship number one the study of the word the study of the word these are the things you do in that secret place. The components that make up true fellowship, koinonia with the spirit. Number one, the study of the word. If you claim you are in intimacy with the Holy Spirit and you don't at least have a commitment, if, even if you don't have a desire, you must have a commitment. Because there are times you may not have a desire, but you must have the commitment. Are you getting my point? Hmm. There are times, listen, there are times you may not have the desire to study. Just like there are times you may not have desire to go to work or go to class. But you have the commitment. Praise God. What is the relevance of studying the word? It gives us an understanding of the ways of God. It gives us an understanding of the ways of God. The thoughts of God. And the mindset of God. Hmm. We must study the word of God. Contained in this book. Listen. When you listen to my teachings. Or you read my books for instance. In that book is a communication of my persuasions. Is that true? A book is simply a documentation of persuasions. When I'm persuaded about a philosophy. Or an idea. Or a pattern of thought i document it so when you study my books it is possible to begin to think like me even without seeing me because you've explored my material so much you have submitted yourself to my thinking pattern and that's what leadership is all about influencing people to come to a point where they adopt your value system by using influence and not force saddam hussein and all of these people, Adolf Hitler, they were bad leaders because they caused people to adopt their ideology by using force and cruelty. But look at Jesus. He made his life a template of his ideology so that when we saw it, we would be able to align to it. Are you getting my point? The word of God, the, the Greek word for word there is logos. And, and it's translated thoughts. The thoughts of a man printed the thoughts the thinking pattern of a man and philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 says this he said let this mind let this mindset let this ideology let this frame of work this plane of judgment let it be in you which was also in christ and the word christ is christos the spirit of god hallelujah let this mind be in you that means there is a mindset everybody say mindset everybody say programming the word of god does something to you i've shared this if i 
if I pick, come my dear. You are a microbiology, right? Biochemistry. This is a biochemist, for instance. Watch this. Some years ago, this lady came not knowing anything about biochemistry. Is that true? But there was a curriculum, is that true? That had been created with the goal of transforming her. Did they change her body? Did they injure her? They just passed her mind to a system for a period of time. And the lecturers looked at her and felt she was qualified to be awarded a degree. So the word of God is his school of training you where you interact with his thinking pattern. It's not a devotional to make you feel spiritual. The word of God is his thought, his mindset, his ideology. Bless you, my dear. So all the while you've been taught all your life that if you want to be rich, money doesn't grow on trees. Hoard as much as you can hoard. Cheat everybody. Kill if it's possible. But then when you explore the mind of God, the constitution that governs the operation of the kingdom, you will find out that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Now you are in conflict. There are two mindsets. Are you getting my point now? And when you submit to the word of God, you have permitted. The word let means permit. Permit this mind. Hallelujah. So culturally, you have been taught that when you envy people and fight with people, then you become the big boss. Ah! And then you come and you study that when you come into Christ, there is a new law. There is a new operation of love that works in you. Hallelujah. Everybody say the word of God reveals to me God's ideologies, God's perspective. And then it also reveals to you God's opinion about every matter. There are many opinions, brothers and sisters. The word of God reveals to you God's opinion. I'll be chipping a lot of things to bless us. Come, Shay. Listen. If I want to marry this lady now, I don't need to go and meet a devil like many of us go around scouting for everybody and they just say, just tell me. Uh -uh. The word of God. It, as a young man, you want to get married. Are you getting my point now? Culturally, you are taught, just go to the village, carry anybody that is available, save Johnny, flog it out in the marriage. Yeah, after all, you are the man. Eventually, you will survive. Two of you will be f tired of fighting and you will now sit down on the round table to discuss how to move your home forward. That's a cultural way. But according to scripture, number one, you know that it's God's will for you to marry. Male and female, he created them. Not two males, not two females. Male and female. So it is very clear that you have, God did not create a man and a will. So if you find out that you are having desire for fish to marry, you know that you need to run for miracle service. There's something wrong. But listen, listen. I'm teaching you how to adopt the mind of God. See that? If you find out you are having a desire for another man or another lady, you know that you need help. Quick. Quick. Either a retreat or prayer. Anyone. You need it quick. Now watch this. I'm showing you how the mindset of God affects you, right? When you now go to study the I, I'm reading now as a gentleman who wants to settle down. And the Bible says, for this cause shall a man, not a boy. So the first question is, what makes a man? I, I'm showing you how to study and meditate upon the word of God. And he said, shall a man leave his father and mother? That means he must be independent. And there are several things that bring for independent responsibility some level of financial security some level of mental stability are you seeing how i'm building on god's mindset leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife not his wife and other concubines his wife right and they too shall become what one flesh automatically it tells me that the lady i'm going to marry is not a house girl it's not a kicking machine to beat her up every time a business deal doesn't go well are you getting my point now and then I study from God's word. He said, children are a heritage from the Lord. Not a product of a man and a woman. They are heritage from the Lord. So, I bend to the mindset of God. 
whereas i'm the kind of person that claims i'm a hot guy yo i can never do this all this nonsense that we carry from different cultures and you now come i'm this in our village ladies kneel down lie down and lick her leg in our village when ladies cook soup is in one plate food is in one plate you now submit to the word of god you either choose to carry your village to your destiny or drop it and pick up the mindset choose it this day the bible says that means you can choose are you getting my point now and i say lady when you make up your mind and say no me i'm not going to do anything no any man that i will give it to him i'm not i'm not cooking for any man i'm this and that we are women i'm independent i have my own rights too then you read wives you first ask yourself am i a wife with this noise i'm making you see that because if you are not a wife he was not talking to you you can continue doing what you are doing but if you are a wife the bible says submit to your husband in everything everything it did not leave you with a choice this is the law of the kingdom and so you now bring yourself and say well talk god this is how you have made it i subscribe to your government hallelujah so if you're one who is lazy and not given to prayer and you find out the bible says luke 18 verse 1 he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint automatically you know that you will submit the goal of studying the word is not to give yourself head knowledge that puffs up every time you study the word find the principles of the kingdom the next thing is submit to their operations bless you man you see the reason why our study of the word does not profit us most of the time because the truth is many of us use devotionals we use books but when we study the word of god we do not submit number one many of us study and argue it when you just study you see something that stings your ego and you just jump it say kite i don't like this this book of colossians let me let me go to something else what is my confidence what what assurance do i have that i'm submitting to a mindset that will not disappoint me he said for i know the thoughts that i think towards you jeremiah 29 verse 11 he said they are thoughts of good you see the word thoughts again my mindset towards you this mindset that i propose to you like a man comes to meet a lady and says look i will take care of you if you go with me in this journey forget about what you see now we are soaking gary but at the, the end is peace that's what god is doing with his word right he's bringing you a proposal and he's saying look 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 how your mindset has made your life the quality of your life so far is a product of your ideologies can you bend and let me propose this mindset i know this the thoughts that i think towards you they are thoughts that will bring you good thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end hallelujah everybody say the study of the word when you study the word you understand the ways of god and when you understand the ways of god you will easily be able to detect error are you getting my point so when you see an operation that looks like god but does not line up with the value system and the ideologies of the kingdom although it looks spiritual you can judge it by the authority of the word are you getting my point now Number two, ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come the open heart. Oh, let the ancient words be part. I never study my Bible as if i'm doing a bible quiz or competition many of us believe in our minds we are used to competitions so when you start studying you now come and meet your friend and say i finished colossians today i was just going through it i even started Ephesians. how has it changed your life who cares who cares whether you read the book no listen 
don't be under pressure it is not spirituality to say i finished my bible 20 times if we cannot see the fruit in your life it's like saying i know jonathan every day you are telling us you know jonathan and we are still the same level we say oh god you are lying somewhere you are lying somewhere because we know the way even jonathan's house boy is we are shouting every time jonathan is my 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 father's brother if not because of situation i would have grown in his house you are telling at a point in time we we'll know that you are telling a lie that's how it is so every time if you speak i'm a word addict i'm studying the word yet we are not seeing your life you are the first to get angry you are the first to slap people you are the first to insult people you are the first to use words that are not cultured by the spirit we know you have not been with god there is an absence of koinonia listen there are parameters that can measure if the word of god is growing in you the measure of the word of god in you is the measure of the lordship of christ in your life are you getting my point he said my little children in whom i travel until christ before me so i see the degree to which you have submitted to the word of god that is the degree to which jesus has become lord in your life experientially hallelujah take your time and study the word of god listen you must be strategic about your studying the word of god every day we have devotionals to help us here but you don't have all the time to study the word of god for eight hours every day that's not how to grow that's a religious way there are many of us that put ourselves under unnecessary pressure i don't study the word of god like that every day i look at there are times i get up in the morning there's no time for anything i have so much activities but i dedicate periodic times when i stay with the word of god intentionally for the purpose of discovering the gems and the treasure in the world and applying it in my life how have you been studying your word so that you can quote some of us even have some bible memory aids that help us philippians 4 13 i can do all things through christ who threatened me uh, this and that and that who shall ascend to the hill of the lord jeremiah chapter this and that da, 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 da. and people say whoa, whoa your life is not changing you are quoting dangerous scriptural principles that have changed the lives of ancient men but because this thing was not done for the purpose of intimacy it was simply done to find relevance outside of the spirit i'm not against bible recitation if you stay with a man so much you should be able to know his words your word have I hidden in my heart. The Bible says that I may not sin against you. How shall a young man keep his way pure? Not by trying to run away from iniquity. He said, but by meditating. By meditating. By meditating. So my value systems change. Hallelujah. Number two. The components that make for true intimacy, true fellowship. Number two is a life of praise and worship. Praise and worship. What does praise and worship do? It creates the atmosphere for the Spirit of God to manifest Himself and to commune with you. The Holy Ghost does not show up everywhere, His manifest presence, His omnipresence. The ability to be everywhere is there. Where can I hide from your presence? The psalmist says. But he's manifest his revealed presence. That he reveals himself for the purpose of communion. It doesn't happen everywhere. Look at me. Have you seen two people in a relationship? When it's evening and they want to really sit down and talk. Does the guy just look and tell the lady to sit down? And then him too, he just sits down in the middle of a junction. That was your day. What do you think the lady would do? The lady will say, this is a picture of many things to come. I'm plotting this graph and it's not heading up to your tent, O ye Israel. You see that? There is always a preparation. Because this guy loves this lady or he's trying to win her heart. He will dress the place, he will arrange it. If she likes red flowers, somebody that you know has no business with red will go out of his way buy red buy anything that looks like red it may be even the ox blood to him is red at least he tried he will bring it and arrange something and says i did this for you i prepared this place this is your own place sit down many of us do not know 
that there is a geography where God meets with men. You can set up an altar, a meeting place. Solomon dedicated a place in the temple and he said, Oh Lord, let this be your resting place. Wherever people are, if they turn to Jerusalem and pray, hearken to them. Hallelujah. You can make your house or your room an altar. There are people here in this church building. You see them in the night. They come. Some of them pray. There are some of us, our rooms. There are some of us, certain places, some toilets, some garages. It doesn't matter where. People just lock themselves somewhere and just say, Lord, I have come to fellowship. And you just sing songs of worship. I love you, Lord. And I lift my hands. That's fellowship, koinonia. To worship you. And you're luring him with your worship. Because he cannot resist worship. Oh my soul rejoice. Take joy my king. And your phone is ringing and you leave it there. It's the guy that says you should send your bank account and you leave it there. In what you hear. The devil is saying, keep singing. You will finish singing and eat your fingers. Let it be a sweet. And he's watching. He's watching. He's seeing the way other things do not mean nothing in his presence. Priority. Sister, you are just singing, I love you, Lord. And Prince Charming is flashing. Ha! Your body. Abel wants to worship. Cain is saying, you better call now that things are working for you. You have been praying and submitting prayer requests. This guy is already being nice now. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Anything you love above the secret place is an idol. I don't care what it is. Abraham took his son son i love you but before you came i was in love with another and not your presence will kill that love he dropped that boy and lifted the knife the reason why many of us may never encounter certain dimensions of glorious things is because god tested you with that thing and his presence and you gave up his presence for it is the same thing as trading your birthright for a pot of soup soup that you eat and three hours later you are hungry Hallelujah. When I'm spending time with God, let the whole world catch fire. Let it catch fire. It's amazing how the devil can create so much distractions. There are some of us who, when we come to the presence of God, that's the time to pick. You just see a lady's hair. Say, that's the hair I've been talking to you about. Let me snap it quickly. And you become a commentator on whatsapp and what they call it all those things and the devil knows when to disturb you he waits until it's time for the presence it's time for you to fellowship with the spirit he now brings up all sorts of things psalm 100 verse 2 says come before him with singing that is the protocol of his presence sing to the spirit Many of you don't sing. Every man that moves in the anointing is a man of worship. It's a secret of the anointing. That's why you see us take our time. That's why you see these people standing. You don't want to imagine the sacrifice that they spend. I'm on stage and they're on stage with me even if it's for 10 hours. And the keyboard is playing. Why? Because he's worshiping. We are creating the atmosphere. He said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. The prophet knew this. And so he said, bring me a Israel. I need, I cannot talk. I need to bring, because the Holy Spirit was not resident in them. He would come. And he said, there is a technology in the spirit that invokes his presence. That's what we do during our traditional festivals. You see some people who just tie some things around. And they come and they are dancing and singing for hours like fools. And when the spirit they are calling finally arrives, you will know it has arrived. Confusion, accidents, all sorts of things registering his presence i'm here you ask for it in india many of you have watched them they blow flutes and they sing and those serpents begin to come out 
and people come to watch. Music is a law of spiritual operation. It's not just a principle. That's why when you listen to all these classical music, orchestras, you know, and, and all this contemporary worship, they do something to your spirit. I have a bad voice, so what? You are not presenting a special number. It's called the secret place. Even if you are not called into the ministry of worship, God is not complaining. He loves it the way it is. Sing any song. Compose your own song. Hallelujah. Have you seen a lady in love and the guy said, I want to sing for you because his friend said, that's what I did. And the guy is not a good musician. He doesn't even know that the key he's taking is not even the key of the right song. He's mixing words. He's just singing all sorts of songs. And because the lady loves, she's saying, wow, you mean you learned this song today? And the guy is saying, you cannot imagine the days of rehearsal. And he's making all sorts of mistakes. Listen, I'm showing you something about some of you. It has happened to you. That's why you're laughing. You are seeing how this guy is doing his best. He's even closing his eyes. He's communicating his passion. On a very good day, you'd have gotten up to work, but you appreciate that's how the Holy Ghost is. He's not complaining. He's not complaining. We can tell you here that your voice is not good, but when you're in the sea, go off key, go up, go down, sing bass, sing anything. It's you and him. It's called koinonia. There are not many people invited. He, not them that dwell in the secret. The secret place is not a congregation. It's a place where you meet. It's a love affair. It's an intercourse. It's called koinonia. Dance with me. Remember our song? Lover of my soul To the song of all songs this is to the Holy Spirit. Would you dance with me, oh lover of my soul? To the song of all songs. Let's sing one more time. I'm making you fall in love with Him. Dance with me, oh. Listen, listen, listen. And while you are singing this song, suddenly his shakina fills the room. You know he's in that place. I mean, your whole body is shaking. This guy is responding. Your, your love song is attracting him. And you're just shaking. And you're wondering. Scriptures are just coming in your mind. And as that is happening, God is talking to people. Bless him. Bless her. Favor him. All that is happening in the secret place. There are sicknesses and challenges. There are burdens that you have and you take to the secret place and you're saying, oh Lord, about this CGPA, I just saw my CGPA, five carryovers, and he gives you a song to sing for him because when you sing, it brings him and that song begins to comfort you. Whereas you were crying about something, after meeting with him, you wipe your tears and you get up and walk like a king. You have a challenge in your life. You're struggling with a habit. You're struggling with something. And you go to his presence. And you begin to sing and say, Lord, something else is taking your place in my life. And I'm reporting to you. I'm a faithful bride. I'm reporting to you that pornography wants to steal your place in my life. I'm reporting to you that pride in ministry is taking your place. And as a jealous God, like a man who is fighting for his bride, he will come and say, let me see that devil that stands would you dance with me oh lover of my soul to the song of all songs listen there is not there are people when you tell secrets about your life you are in trouble it's as you would have just gone to nta and announce to the whole world because they will tell everybody they are just don't tell anybody the next person will tell sister b say i did i don't know you if anything happens i've never met you but the holy ghost is the only one who can listen to everything about you and still not complain 
I don't know one man who has been with his wife and they've never had reason. The Holy Spirit will never quarrel you. You come with your weaknesses broken. You come with all sorts of things. When men reject you, when that guy says you're good for nothing, you refuse to sleep with me, go. You're coming back to the secret place. That's the place of strength. Men of God who do not have the secret place, when persecution starts, and now, see, the, the apostolic ministry comes with heavy persecution. If you are not a man of the secret place, you will never last. Men will question the source of your anointing. Men will question the reason why crowds are gathered like this. Men will question all kinds of things. When men shout and people, oh, you think it's everybody that sends me nice text messages. I wish so. I wish so. When I get all those things, I look forward to my hour of prayer. And I just go into his presence and I lie down flat. The one who can love me the way I am, men will tell you if you are looking too fat you are looking too slim the holy spirit says you are okay just stay there you are okay i don't need any shedding weight i don't need your hair is not rough you are okay come on now ladies you have given your heart to a man of inferior value why not come to this spirit you gave your whole life to a man you were sure that you are not the only one in his life but this is one who has pledged commitment with you forever You never know what true love is until you meet the Holy Spirit. When you meet the Holy Spirit, you start searching for a man that can give you the same effect in your secret place. And if you don't find it, you don't say yes to him. So when one brother comes because he likes you, he now wears suit and comes for koinonia. When he's talking to you, you are looking for that spiritual effect that cannot be faked. And you say, my brother, you talk like you're a Christian, but I don't see that signature. Meaning you are not a man of the secret place. Hallelujah. Worship. Do you, do you spend time? I'm telling you, when I'm in the presence of God, I'm not Apostle Joshua Selman. I throw away all of those things and I roll before him and I cry like a baby. And this is how I prepare for meetings. Brothers and sisters, this is how I prepare for meetings. I talk to the Lord and I say, Lord, Friday is miracle service and so many people are coming right now and I cannot help them. I'm, the, I'm but a young man. There are so many expectations on me and I hear the Spirit of God telling me, don't worry, we'll go together. We'll do this. That's why when I sit down in my mind i'm saying okay holy spirit worship team is now ministering we are ready to go and i can just feel him saying go 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 and do it prove to the people that you are not alone ah! and as he left me not once many guys will run away from you when the going gets tough is that true i remember a guy who was making noise about a lady i will marry her he found out that she had a problem with bedwetting and it was a demonic problem the lady was a very responsible and godly lady it's just that it had been there for a while when he found out ah the brother said you know guys i'm busy oh, please don't disturb me i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy and the day this lady came and she cried to me and it pained me because i know the brother i said such a virtuous lady so you are already trying to you've not gotten married but there is something about her life you are not proud of and you are now running away that's the same thing you will do when you get married but the holy ghost he will give you a garment you want to stain it outside when you come you see him holding soap already waiting for you while you are trying to explain he says there's no need that you came into my presence is a sign that you are not a rebel to the song of all songs can we sing this song just once as i prepare to round up would you dance with me Just the voices, just one more time from the depths of your heart. Would you dance with me? Oh, 
lover of my soul to the song of all songs the third component of intimacy with the holy ghost is prayer the first is the study of the word the second is the ministry of heartfelt praise and worship god blesses you by a keyboard god blesses you by a guitar are you getting my point even if it's only one key learn it cfg and the minor just sit down and lie down that's all you know you are not learning it to sing somewhere one day people will come and listen to you i remember when years ago when i used to be we were three myself steve strings and andy now called ambassage is a gospel musician three of us were roommates then in the Fodio, and we would worship goodness i was like a madman sometimes i would lie down and they used to keep the keyboard of winners campus fellowship then then steve was the vice president of winners campus fellowship so they used to keep the equipment in our room praise god and i'll just get on the keyboard and steve would just take the guitar and you know his fingers those those anointed fingers goodness and steve will begin to play and while we're just playing the glory of god one night something happened i'll never forget myself andy and steve we were just singing and worshiping for hours and then we held three of our hands and brothers and sisters i tell you the truth we could not lift our hands god came into that room when you see a man of the secret he's ever looking young it's not about eating well he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither you see a man of 60 years 65 years looking as if there is a supernatural ability working because there truly is if it's a life-giving spirit and you stay with a life-giving spirit for so long something happens to you do you believe me absolutely prayers especially praying in the spirit praying in the spirit is a mystery that initiates and sustains true communion many of us come from circles where the subject of praying in tongues has been challenged i came from an orthodox background and i understand what it means i went to a, a seminary and i i have touched different orthodox circles so i understand the way Pentecostals taught it was a terrible way. Nobody would, they, 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 and, and then all of the rascality and madness that happened around praying in tongues made it look as though when the Holy Spirit came upon people, he made them idiots. They did not teach us that tongues was a mystery. It was a language of heaven that was supposed to enforce communion. It's a secret code of communication. We were not taught like that. I'll never forget the day they were going to pray for us to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I didn't understand anything. The man was teaching, I was feeling like sleeping. The only thing I know is he called two people and he told one to run on one leg and the other one ran on two legs and he said, that's it, praying in understanding tongues. That's all I remember. And then we sang one song. Hallelujah, Jehovah reigns. Hallelujah, Jehovah reigns. Hallelujah, Jehovah reigns. Give him the glory that he deserves. That's all. And then we got filled with the Holy Ghost. When I started praying in tongues, I was wondering. I said, ah, oh God, I hope I'm not just joining everybody and lying. Maybe they received the real thing. Because some people were falling me. I didn't fall. Nothing happened. But I was praying at this. I doubted that thing for days. But I began to see transformation in my life. In JS2, I was made the timekeeper of the whole school. There was a grace in my life that I could not explain. JS2, very small boy, quarter to five, every day the Holy Ghost would wake me physically. Someone would tap me, quarter to five, quarter to five. We had a matron called Miss Rhoda, wonderful woman. She's gone to be with the Lord now. One day, when I woke up, five on the dot, I would ring the bell. She called me and laid hands. She said, you're an exceptional person. I would study just once. I'm serious. I never have to read again. Once. It was supernatural. Then we started 
one one prayer evening meeting called Operation Catacruz. We were tired of the nonsense that was happening around. So we, myself and five guys, we were like the apostles of the school. Five of us, very small. We did wonderful things. Wonderful things. One of them was a sickler. He was like our Peter. And all through that time, that, that devil of infirmity left. Oh, we did mighty things. I prayed for people who were stammerers. And all of a sudden, the, stammer, the stammering would leave. I, for us, it was not a big deal. Because nobody taught us that this thing was great. You need honorarium, you're a great man. No, we just did our thing. And then at a point, they now started bringing a lot of priests and they were teaching. They brought a lot of people, they taught, and we knew it was us they were talking to. And then eventually, we threw away all these things of God. It was something in my spirit. And when we threw away all those things, it was in less than two months, our leader died. I was with him the final moment in the hospital. His ribs were swollen. That sickness came back. What he was delivered from. They were born triplets. One died. There's only one who is alive now. And I looked at him in the hospital. I told him, don't worry, you'll be fine. Little did I know that that would be the last time. Because we ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I cried one day, many years, when I realized that that was the reason. We left him. We actually asked him to walk out of our lives. Take your place. Take your place. I will never ask you to walk out of my life. Take your place. Take your place. That gentleman died. Most of the great prayer warriors who were doing great things. I tell you, many of them today, some of them are drunkards, some of them are whatever because they preach to us that forget the, you know, the Holy Spirit, blah, 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 blah. Some of you right now, you are at the verge of throwing away. The only thing you have not thrown is praying in tongues. You've thrown every other thing. Prayers. Prayer opens us up to sensitivity. It opens us up through sensitivity, sorry, to the promptings and the impulses of the spirit. The ministry of prayer opens us up, makes us sensitive. You can get more of that on my teaching, spiritual perception. Opens your organs of interacting with spiritual things. And then you begin to move in certain operations of the spirit. The word of knowledge, the knowing of the spirit the witness of the spirit all of these things are activated in the place of prayer prayer empowers us to hear his voice the bible says while they prayed while they prayed the holy ghost spoke to them not while they sat down while they prayed the holy ghost spoke to them he said separate me paul and barnabas while they prayed let's hurry up number four corporate fellowship with the brethren components that bring intimacy or components of true fellowship corporate fellowship with the brethren very important acts chapter 13 verse 2 the bible says while they prayed and fasted they prayed they sang the holy ghost said unto them not unto one man let me tell you the importance of corporate fellowship like this it gives you the opportunity to partake of the dealings of the spirit in the life of others are you getting my point now so levels that your personal intimacy with the holy spirit has not brought you when you come together is like a corporate receiving hallelujah psalms 133 verse 1 says behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity and he begins to describe it he says it's like the oil that comes upon the head of aaron down to his bird down to his cat even to his garment he said for there God has commanded the blessing. Behold how good and pleasant it is. The Bible says, Acts chapter 2 verse 1, it says, Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all gathered together in one accord. The Holy Ghost never came until they were together. There is the mystery of corporate fellowship. 
not just emptying sitting down and occupying empty pews no fellowship do you know that you can be together as a congregation but not have fellowship because there's bitterness there's anger there's competition there's party spirit seditions and all kinds of things but when you come that's why one of our core value the first of our core value as a ministry is love love not power not anointing not intimacy love love the bond of perfectness there is only fellowship when there is true love when two people are fighting the first thing that disappears is laughter laughter absence of laughter is a sign that something is wrong corporate fellowship what does it do it opens us to other dimensions of his dealings it creates oneness in the body the bible says in acts chapter in, in ephesians chapter 4 it says till we all come to the unity of the faith the unity of the faith the same understanding as a body we believe you were blessed by the message you just watched let us know what stood out to you in the comment section you can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos so more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages we celebrate you and see you in our next video thank you